Welcome to Weld.com. Paul Brown here. Today we're going to talk about silicon bronze MIG brazing, which is something you welders have been requesting for a while now. The reason this process is so popular is because it's used extensively in thin gauge auto body repair due to the low heat input into the high strength steels, which would degrade badly if welded with traditional MIG or other processes. So let's get started. The use of MIG brazing in the construction of cars and trucks started in the late 60s and has been gaining ground for the last 20 years in collision repair. As a matter of fact, many manufacturers have detailed procedures they require in repairing their vehicles. GM, Honda, Mercedes, and many others are pretty serious about this. And for them, silicon bronze MIG welding is the name of the game. Another advantage to this process is that the steels being used in the automotive field are either zinc galvanized or aluminum coated, and the brazing process does not burn off that corrosion resistance. Another unique advantage of MIG brazing is it can lay down beautiful gold beads, which are great for decorative work. Check this out. Look at this great gold bead. There's no burn through at all. There's no warpage at all. This is 1 16th inch stainless, and we use this furred non-woven disc on here. Great stuff. You need to get some of those. What the heck is silicon bronze anyway? To me, it sounds like a tanning lotion for a Hollywood movie star. Well, silicon is not the same as silicone. And for you science buffs, silicon is an element with the number of 14, and second most common element, at 28% of the Earth's crust right behind oxygen. Let's be polite and just call it sand, even though it is much more than that. Silicone, on the other hand, is a polymer made from silicon and a few goodies that no one will tell you what they are. Anyway, silicon bronze is copper with about 2 to 4% silicon, which is a deoxidizer. It's got 1% zinc, 1% manganese, a little lead, aluminum, iron, and a few other things. Enough science for now. Oh, and by the way, there are many types of bronze, brass, and nickel alloys with copper. But right now, silicon bronze is our hero metal. Another major advantage is the ability to weld dissimilar metals and hard to weld materials together, like taking this nasty galvanized and putting it onto some hot rolled, or even copper, or even stainless without burning off the galvanizing. We can take this stainless and put it onto a piece of coal roll or the stainless and put it onto a piece of copper. It's really a game changer. We need to protect the well pool with pure argon. No 75-25 mixes with CO2 or other gases. I have found in testing with O35 wire that about 17 and a half to 18 and a half volts works great compared to 19 to 21 volts for steel when using a short circuit transfer. You can also use an axial spray transfer, but that is slinging some serious heat and metal and really needs to be pulsed. It also needs a lot more voltage and amperage that these smaller machines aren't capable of. We're using more wire to make a bigger weld nugget as we are not co-mangling with the base metal. And today we'll be using a spool of Harris ERCU-SI-A 035 silicon bronze wire on this Everlast Storm 215C. Setup is pretty easy, even for an old timer who has to get his wife to change the channel on the TV. Electro positive, 18 volts, 240 inches per minute. One thing to note, it may be helpful to have U-groove rollers to keep from deforming the soft silicon bronze wire and also a Teflon liner to keep from bird nesting the wire. These same rollers can also be used with aluminum wire without any worry of contamination as if running steel. We're going commando today, as they say, and using a standard liner and V-groove rollers. I'm crossing my fingers and toes. We did not run into any trouble, but you will be the first to see it here. I guarantee that. I did do some welding at my shop and had no issues, so we should be good to go. Okay, why are we using MIG instead of TIG? And why do we call it brazing? Well, for one, it is much faster and requires a lot less skill feeding the rod, holding the torch, 
and not taking your tungsten swimming in that molten weld pool. As far as calling it braze welding, any bonding below 850 degrees is called soft soldering. Anything above that is called hard soldering or brazing up to 2000 degrees Fahrenheit, where the base metals start to melt. And then it is called welding over 2000 degrees. Since we are not melting the base metal, we are brazing. And by the way, brazing has been around for 5,000 years. Maybe there were aliens here after all. So what is the difference between TIG brazing and MIG brazing? Well, with MIG, the bronze is transferred to the puddle, and when it shorts out, causing splashing of the metal, that's where it melts. Unlike TIG, where it is fed into the puddle to melt. This makes it a little difficult to control that metal. It is more sluggish and does not flow as easily. Remember, we are not melting the base metal, causing a fusion weld. We are laying a molten metal on top of a solid metal for an adhesive weld, just like you do with epoxy, Gorilla Glue, JB Weld, and all those other great sticky products. You want to keep a wire stick out. That's the distance from the contact tip to the arc of about 3 eighths of an inch. It is really important to snip off that little ball that may form on the end so you have the least resistance when starting your arc. It can cause poor arc starts or jam up the wire, and voila, you have a bird's nest. Another thing, MIG of any kind needs a really good ground. You're constantly feeding wire, and if you're not properly grounded, the arc can't melt the wire, and you end up with a mess. I use this little ball of copper wire underneath the ground clamp, to give me thousands of little contact points. And it really helps make a much better ground. You'll see the difference. I used to do production welding on two inch steel angle that was up to 20 feet long and welding an inch and a half square tube to the inside. The ground was at one end of the steel table. There was another guy next to me doing the same thing. Well, that old clamp would get so hot you could not touch it. And telling me it was a poor ground. So I brought my secret weapon in and you know what? No hot ground anymore. We were welding about 225 amps all night long. My starts were instant. There was no drive-by shooting sound going on. But my buddy, he did not think he needed to do the same copper wire trick. Well, his starts were terrible and so were his welds. So try this technique. You'll really see a big difference. And let us know how you like it. By the way, I did not think of this. I learned this over 10 years ago from all places. Yeah, you guessed it, YouTube. Who says you can't teach an old dog new tricks? Let's talk about the difference in the bronze puddle. It is very fluid, but sluggish and does not freeze as fast as a steel puddle. So you do not get those ripples and you can manipulate the puddle a bit and maybe get a little overlapping and also get a more consistent bead but you can also make a smooth puddle by no gun manipulation. By using a bump technique, where you put a dab of metal down, let it cool slightly, and then put another dab of metal just a little past it, and keep doing that over and over again, you can control the puddle in vertical positions. It is best to push the bead so that you clear the way of oxides and whatnot that may be in the way by the cleaning action of the argon and electrode positive arc. You do not want the material to be dirty, but a polished surface is not in your best interest. Remember, we are making an adhesive weld and a little roughness helps the weld stick better. Okay, 1 16th inch fillet weld. Let's do some copper and stainless and see how that works. Okay, we're going to have to add a little bit more heat because we have copper. Now let me bump up the heat on the machine. 
18 and a half volts, 281 inches per minute. This is galvanized one tenth of an inch. These are hurricane straps we're putting together. Did you see a lot of smoke coming off of that? Oh, yeah. The one thing you don't see is a lot of white along here, which would be the zinc boiling off. A regular MIG weld, this would be covered in that white dust, which would be zinc oxide. You can see on the back, some of it burn, but it's very minimal just along that edge. Okay, let's look at these welds. This was a 1 inch carbon steel to carbon steel with slight weaving with a cursive E sort of motion. We were running at 18 and a half volts and 240 inches per minute. This is a zinc coated piece. We didn't knock any of the zinc off beforehand and we didn't wear a respirator because we have plenty of good ventilation in here. Now, this fella here, this is copper to stainless steel, and the copper really sucked up the heat. So I did have to crank that up, and I think I went to 18 and a half volts and about 280 inches a minute. And down here we have a 18 gauge stainless steel to stainless steel with just a straight stringer bead. And you might be able to notice just how smooth that bead is down there. There was no distortion on the material. There was no burn through on the back, which is great. No burn through on that side. And normally if you had a piece of stainless like that, that you welded with stainless rod, either with TIG or MIG, it would look like a pretzel because this was not clamped down in any way. I'm really excited about what you can weld with this without getting any distortion on it. Well, thanks for watching today. If you have any questions or need help, go to our forum and connect with us. It's at well.com forward slash forum. If you want to check out the exclusive content and member perks, join our channel and support the well.com community. Till next time, Alveda Zayn.